on an island just below the first cataract of the Nile, an ancient inscription written around the 4th century B.C. was found which claimed to be a copy of a document written by Pharaoh Djoser more than 1,000 years earlier. It is the story of a land grant made by the Pharaoh to the priests of the god Num. It tells of seven years of famine and seven years of plenty, how Pharaoh had a dream and consulted his chancellor for help, it contains most elements of the seven years of famine and seven years of plenty story, although they were corrupted in this account, written over one thousand years after the event took place. But most importantly, the priests who wrote this inscription were relying upon the land grants made by this pharaoh to justify their claim to some land. They were not writing what they believed was an ancient myth. They obviously believed the land grants made by Pharaoh Djoser to still be valid and of enough authority to still be in effect well over 1,000 years later. And Joseph bought all the land of Egypt for Pharaoh. Only the land of the priests bought he not, for the priests had a portion assigned them of Pharaoh. Ancient Egyptian records list Djoser as the 16th Pharaoh of Egypt, and historians have classified him with the so-called Third Dynasty. His chancellor, named Imhotep, was first known through the writings of the Egyptian historian Manetho, who in the 3rd century B.C. wrote, During Djoser's reign there lived a man named Imhotep, who had the reputation of the Greek god of medicine, and who invented the art of building with hewn stone. The legends attributed to Imhotep were so incredible that he was considered to be mythical until this century when excavations at Djoser's pyramid complex revealed the base of a statue with the name Djoser on it and the name Imhotep with his long list of titles, one of which was Chief Under the King, a title which first appears with Imhotep and also was first bestowed upon Joseph. Imhotep was also the architect of Pharaoh Djoser's pyramid and surrounding complex, a veritable city within a city of incredible beauty and extremely advanced in design. Built on the plateau of Saqqara adjacent to ancient Memphis, the pyramid within the complex is the first ever built in Egypt. Ron Wyatt spent a great deal of time here searching for evidence which might shed light on the biblical account. Such an event is the famine described in the story of Joseph, and the distribution of grain to the other countries would have required a major facility and system of organization. When the famine came and Joseph's brothers came from Canaan to get grain from Egypt, we are told that they went to Joseph, which indicates that he personally oversaw the distribution, at least to those coming from foreign countries and this would mean that there was certainly a central location or granary to which the foreigners came. The complex at Saqqara contains eleven massive pits which even the Egyptians are at a loss to explain. They are not tombs, for all tombs were underground and carefully sealed, while these were accessible from the surface, and they are extremely large. But most fascinating is the fact that they are all connected by chutes. Ron believes these were the grain storage pits of the seven-year famine. As grain was removed from one pit, grain from the other pits flowed through the chutes, making the grain always accessible from one location. These are within the wall of the step pyramid complex, which has only one entrance, and it opens to a long covered passageway with small cubicles on each side, each just the right size for a person to sit with perhaps a small table. The narrow, singular entrance would have allowed only a few people to enter at a time. There was no doubt in Ron's mind that this was the main center of grain distribution on a massive scale. As people arrived to get their grain, they lined up to enter the long corridor. Inside, they paid one of the cashiers in one of the cubicles for the grain. After payment was made, perhaps they were given a sack for grain which reflected the amount of their payment. 
Then they proceeded through the corridor straight to the area of the grain bins. Once there, they descended the stairway next to the storage bins, handed their sack to a worker who filled it with grain and returned it to them. Then they exited through a small door on the lower level which led to the outside of the complex. When the pits were first excavated, bits of grain still remained in them. During the seven-year famine, Egypt gained great wealth and prominence among the nations through the selling of the grain. The Egyptians who lived in their cities along the Nile had little to do during the famine since they had a seven-year supply of grain to rely on and were able to devote their time to the building projects of the pharaoh, not as slaves, but as grateful subjects. The family of Jacob who lived in the Delta, separate from the native population, prospered and grew, exempt from the one-fifth taxation levied on the native population. From the time Jacob's family came to Egypt until the birth of Moses, many pharaohs had come and gone, many ruling contemporaneously with others in different regions. But until now, all recognized the rights granted to the people of Israel to live in the land of Ramses. But that was about to change.